The European Union go forward with their defense union plans, and Huawei finds a new way to infiltrate the West. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of the day. It's been an interesting couple of days. For years and years, Remainers and Rejoiners told us that the European Union do not have any ambitions towards harmonizing countries' defense policies. They have no ambitions towards centralizing everything. But mm, we even heard from Nick Clegg once in a TV debate. He said that even mentioning the idea of an EU army is a dangerous fantasy. It's just a sinister conspiracy dreamt up by Brexiteers. It's like saying the moon landing was fake or Elvis is still alive. That's what they said. But what's the latest that we have? We know Frontex. They're in charge of uh, the European Union's external borders to, you know, because they believe in borders now. They have released this video about their new uniform. Well, they seem very, very proud. They actually tweeted that for the first time, the European Union has its own uniformed service. The border, European Border and Coast Guard Standing Corps. Yeah, so this is how they start. And for the past couple of years, especially, documents have been coming out from Brussels uh, talking about harmonizing and creating the Defence Union. Macron has been talking about it. Merkel has been talking about it. Guy Verhofstadt is obsessed with it. And we have this now. A universal uniform for, the, for all the 27 member states. This is how they do it. Back in the 50s and 60s, when it, the whole project was a small club, just focusing on steel and coal. And then towards 60s and 70s, they created the economic zone, the common market. And then we got closer to the 90s. The European Union came out of nowhere. They always do it gradually. They progress very slowly without you even realizing. And then one day you wake up. And NATO's gone because the European Union have taken over because they think that they can centralize and harmonize everything and they could defend the whole world like it's just some sort of Star Trek fantasy land. This is how they do it. But let's talk about Frontex. Are these people actually competent? Do they know what they're doing? Do we, can we trust them to protect the continent of Europe? Clearly not, because recently we had the Greek um, security forces uh, going slightly aggressive against the uh, migrants and refugees who were entering the European borders. Uh, up to a point where they basically started a pushback campaign. They send them back. They turn around the boat. Uh, turn turn the boats around, and that actually violated international law. <laughs> and that is the Greek Coast Guard right behind them. It's the same European Union that are very, very concerned about international law. They criticized the UK and Brexit because, you know, it could have broken international law, what Boris Johnson had planned. They criticized uh, Priti Patel and the Home Office for protecting, for wanting to protect the UK borders from illegal boats. But what the uh, Greek security forces did, they captured the migrants. Under international law, it is their duty to give the new arrivals a hearing and filled their applications for asylum. That's what the Home Office has been doing here. Uh, when the boats arrive, you have to take them in, go through the application, and then the trouble is afterwards, because if, if, they, if they fail, they have to obviously send them back, but then the lefty activist lawyers try to stop them in this country. But what they did, they actually dragged them back out to the sea and just released them. And yeah, that's what they did. But the European Union came out and said, oh, we had no idea that was happening. This was just the Greeks going rogue. Is it true, though? Because we just heard that an aircraft used by the European Border Protection Agency, Frontex, also passed over the refugees. And the surveillance uh, uh, plane was actually part of the European Union operation in Greece. They were there. But in the name, in the words of Jeremy Corbyn, they were present, but not involved. This is what they probably would say. And, but these are the people who are, keep talking about open borders and how we should all be friendly and in a family, hug a tree. But they've been quite proud of the fact that, you know, this week, this is a tweet uh, in, uh, well, back at the 7th of January, saying that 1,200 officers are now serving at EU's land, sea, and air borders. They're protecting the borders. 
Apparently they are allowed to do it, but the UK shouldn't. They even boasted about this. The number of illegal border crossings at the EU's external borders fell 8% in the first 11 months this year to 116,840, largely because of the drop in arrivals in eastern and western Mediterranean. Clearly, they care about their borders, but we're not allowed to care about our borders. Everything should be open for us. And this is the problem I have with these guys, like everything, because this is what Science and Business uh, published in December. Uh, the European Union set to launch an almost 8 billion euros defense R&D program after the Council and Parliament agree to the budget. Now, this will make the EU third biggest investor in defense research in Europe. Now, that's what they're, they're spending all this money on this. Now, MEPs and the German presidency of the European Union have just reached this agreement in December uh, on this fund, considering they have to spend a lot of money on a number of other issues that they have. Clearly, that's not really a priority. And clearly, competing with NATO is the biggest priority for the European Union. Now, speaking of NATO, there is this video that talks about the fact that we already have NATO and the Defence Union is also being created. What are the differences? The answer to some at least is a military union. A union where armies will be pulled together, fighting common fights, French soldiers fighting side by side with German, Portuguese, Polish and Italian, to name but a few. What's interesting is that the EU actually already has a military shield of sorts, in the form of the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation, or NATO. The vast majority of EU member states, 21 to be precise, are in their own right NATO members. Well, you saw that yourself. So there is a difference. NATO doesn't actually create a universal defence policy and, and a universal a uniform for all the countries that are part of NATO. It's a difference. You don't really have, uh, you know, one council completely deciding to do something without actually asking permission or having some sort of agreement. Everything will be centralised if you go with the EU Defence Union. Now, on the plus side, the EU Defence Union is unlikely unless they get rid of vetoes because a number of countries in the EU member states, uh, the 27 countries, not all of them agree with it. So it's very difficult as long as they have vetoes and as long as they have votes, it's not going to happen. But the vetoes might go away very soon. Uh, in, in the middle of all this, we are going through a lot of uh, crises in the West, uh, with China and a number of other threats. Uh, China and Huawei, according to CTAM, are now planning to change their route because of the sanctions uh, that have been under, especially uh, since President Trump introduced them from America. They're now, this is obviously the, the sanctions on their hardware, all the products that they have they're now transitioning into focusing on software and data instead of actual hardware. That's very sneaky, but you know, in a weird way, quite smart. So they will likely transition it towards software and uh, you know, moving on from their hardware supply because you know, they have to shift because of the sanctions uh, that, that the US introduced. So what they now want to do is that, um, this is actually even worse because the, the CCP and the companies that are backed up by the CCP, the Communist Party, have already shown a lot of skills when it comes to data and um, software. So be very, very afraid and do not rely on the European Union to defend the continent, considering this is the same European Union that have made a deal with China and the Communist Party. And these people want to replace NATO, apparently, with their weird uniform, with the weird hat. What does that even look like? It makes no sense. So this is what we have. And the European Union, who always say we are so united, and if you leave us like Britain, you will be isolated because you need us more than we need you. Well, clearly that's also not true. Because now they've come out to say that all the things, all the threats that you know, the UK will have to face when they become isolated, not independent, always been a lie. The latest that we have is that the mobile phone operators are now um, being told that they don't have to introduce uh, roaming charges for, Brit uh, for British citizens who uh, ar arrive in Europe. So that, that, was part of, that was supposed to be part of a, a negative impact of Brexit. That, you know, when the middle classes travel to Europe, they have to pay, you know, about £5 extra to have some credit for a month uh, for the roaming charges. But no, the European Union know that they need the Brits to go to Europe, to travel, to work, to live, just a holiday. So they've already said they will not be bringing back the roaming charges for Brits who are travelling in Europe.
that's the thing we have. I mean, on this channel, well, I am going to focus a lot on the EU Defence Union uh, in the next few weeks and months, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll give you all the latest updates. And don't forget to become a member of the channel. We get a lot of perks. Tomorrow we have our weekly video call with the members. So if you are a member, check out the community post, community tab uh, on the channel. If you're not a member, sign up. Become a member, you get a lot of perks and benefits. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC. I'll see you guys in the next video.